Archaeologists have discovered a vast tunnel under an ancient Egyptian temple that may lead to Cleopatra's lost tomb. Many of our discoveries of ancient Egypt are found destroyed or plundered. But despite how long we have been searching for Cleopatra's tomb, we keep finding new jaw-dropping discoveries, many of which point us in the right direction. It was the beginning of a religious act that might end up with her being buried in a temple and her lost tomb could be found there. Recently, we discovered an untouched miracle of a tunnel that might be housing Cleopatra's body. And surprisingly, it has been preserved excellently and holds great promise. Is the renewed hope of finding Cleopatra's tomb in this tunnel worth it? What questions and debates does finding this queen help answer? Join us as we explore why scientists in Egypt announced that they found an untouched miracle while looking for Cleopatra. As famous as Cleopatra was, it is strange that nobody can give a correct account of what happened to her after her death or even where she was buried. She was a mother, she was a wife, she was a queen, she was a god. Since 2005, a dedicated team of archaeologists, led by the renowned Kathleen Martinez, has been tirelessly searching for Cleopatra's tomb. 18 years is a long time to search for anything, even for an archaeologist. And just as the team thought their efforts had been futile and were about to give up, they stumbled upon an extraordinary discovery. Hidden deep beneath Osiris's temple in northern Egypt, they unearthed an untouched miracle. The zealous team and its lead scientist found a tunnel over 4,200 feet long and more than 42 feet deep. The tunnel revealed a secret chamber that had remained undisturbed for centuries. The anticipation surrounding this discovery is unmatched, as experts believe this could be the long-lost tomb of Cleopatra. Between 280 and 270 BC, Pharaoh Ptolemy II Philadelphus founded the historic city of Taposiris Magna. Taposiris Magna means the Great Tomb of Osiris, associated with a local Egyptian temple. The temple is located west of the city of Alexandria. Since 1998, several archaeologists have been working on excavating the city, Luckily, in 2010, archaeologists found the original gate to a temple dedicated to Osiris. They also dug up a massive granite statue of a headless Ptolemaic king. Found a beautiful statue. Maybe it's one of the most beautiful statues that found dated to the Greek period. The statue is headless. The statue was adorned and dressed in the traditional Egyptian collar and kilt. Without a head, historians like Dr. Zahi Hawass former Minister of State for Antiquities Affairs of Egypt, cannot place which Ptolemaic king this was. But they have a good guess. Dr. Hawass thinks the statue was for a Hellenistic era pharaoh, Ptolemy IV, Philopater, the fourth pharaoh of Ptolemaic Egypt, from 221 to 204 BC. This first discovery gives us lots of important information about the life of the ancient Egyptians during the Golden Age. Also within this temple, Kathleen Martinez discovered several ceramic pots, vessels, and two alabaster statues from the Ptolemaic era lay buried. The tunnel was most likely constructed alongside the temple in the early 3rd century BCE. It was referred to as a geometric miracle in a statement from the Egyptian Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities, which announced the discovery. Due to several unfortunate earthquakes between 320 and 1303 CE, a portion of the tunnels was submerged underwater and a good portion of history was lost with it. For many years, Kathleen Martinez thought that the Taposiris Magna Temple was where the legendary Queen Cleopatra was buried. Following Alexander the Great's conquest of Egypt in 332 BC, the Taposiris Magna became a center of religion. Perhaps the ancestors prayed to the gods to free them from the unfortunate agony of becoming a colony. Alexander the Great's conquest led to the founding of Alexandria. You have a supreme power over other human beings that could never be questioned. The tunnel and the temple were probably constructed at the same time in the early 3rd century BCE. The temples were most likely built as part of a tomb for Cleopatra and Mark Anthony, two of history's most famous lovers. The tunnels under the Taposiris Magna Temple remain one of archaeology's biggest finds, not just because they could lead us to Cleopatra's grave and probably that of her lover. The discovery of this temple and the tunnel underneath it has revived widespread interest in the search for Cleopatra's final resting place. 
The origin and relationship of the Tapa Cyrus Magna Temple to Cleopatra have also been better clarified following the tunnel's discovery. The temple served as a gathering place for believers and was probably built in homage to the gods and goddesses of ancient Egypt. Archaeologists toil away at its secrets as the rest of the world restlessly awaits the unveiling of what lies within this hidden chamber. With bated breath, we all hope to finally set our eyes on one of history's most iconic figures. Moreover, what makes this discovery even more fascinating is the possibility of finding Cleopatra's remains intact, discovering new artifacts and more links to Cleopatra that may help us better understand who she was. Gazing upon this icon will reveal insights into her life and reign. We might finally be able to access the secrets she took to the grave. All of these are too tempting for any archaeologist to resist. While we wait though, some amazing discoveries have been made. One such discovery is the mummy with the golden tongue found in Egypt. This astonishing find sheds new light on the burial practices of the ancient Egyptians. The golden tongue was believed to enable the deceased to speak and negotiate their journey into the afterlife. When it comes to architectural prowess, Egypt is not lacking. Having built many intriguing structures that still stand to this day, tourists regularly flock to the country to catch a glimpse of its wonders. The country, also called the mother of the world, received over 11 million tourist visits in 2022. Most of these visitors go to witness the impressive tombs and inexplicable pyramids, many of which were incredibly advanced for the time they were built. Despite their age, these structures were also quite refined. Sites like the Tapa Cyrus Magna will soon receive visitors too, once the excavation is completed. It has garnered a lot of attention for its possibility of housing the remains of Cleopatra. However, regardless of what is discovered in its tunnels, its wonders and rich information will hold our attention. The only structure comparable to the Taposiris Magna is the Eupolinos Tunnel in Greece, which also carried water for over a thousand years. Our only hope is that these tunnels have not been wiped clean by the water. For now, Kathleen Martinez and her team of archaeologists continued to discover various figurines and statues of the goddess Isis, a cemetery full of Greco-Roman-style mummies and coins that bear the names into the images of Cleopatra VII, amongst others. These findings fueled the belief that Cleopatra may lie beneath those tunnels. Cleopatra once ruled Ptolemaic Egypt. Her reign lasted from March 51 BC, following her father's death, and ended in August 30 BC. Many believe she committed suicide with her lover, Mark Anthony, bringing a rather romantic end to her reign. Another major discovery that archaeologists have picked up in the meantime along the field's history is the tomb of the pregnant ancient mummy. This discovery would give anyone chills. Finding a tomb where a mummy with a fetus lays raises eyebrows. It is only natural to wonder what could have caused such a death. The discovery also raises questions about the woman's identity and why she was mummified with her fetus still in her womb. Subsequently, the pregnant mummy was dubbed the Mysterious Lady and transported to the National Museum Warsaw. The mummy and its coffin were donated to the University of Warsaw in 1826 and have been kept safe and sound in the National Museum in Warsaw, Poland since 1917. Looking back, the story behind the mummy is quite intriguing. Initially, the mummy was thought to be male. This was because the coffin was quite elaborate, typical of male burials. It didn't help that the name and cartonage the coffin had on it pointed to a male mummy. According to the writing, the interred was named Hor Jehuti. Tell me. I'm very happy, I'm very proud of this discovery. However, in 2016, scientists re-examined the mummy. It was then discovered that the bones were too delicate and the mummy might not be Hor Jehuti. There were no male reproductive organs, and a three-dimensional reconstruction of the mummy revealed that it had breasts. Perhaps ancient Egyptians intentionally placed an entirely different and pregnant mummy in the tomb with a male name. If this is the case, whoever made the switcheroo succeeded, creating the first female mummy buried in a male's tomb. Another landmark discovery that has emerged is another vast tomb that sits in what was once Memphis, the capital of ancient Egypt. Although the site is home to several pyramids, the latest discovery has yielded one of the biggest rewards for Egyptologists. This new tomb was discovered close to the Pyramid of King Tetai, 
Although discovered in 2010, researchers couldn't identify who the pyramid belonged to until 2020, when they noticed a name inscribed on the wall of the funerary temple. The tomb was found to belong to Queen Neet, wife of King Teti, who died about 4,200 years ago. According to Dr. Zahi Hawass, a leading Egyptologist and a former minister of antiquities, the discovery of Queen Neet's tomb would help correct the history of ancient Egypt. This is because her name was not found in any other record of ancient history. Of the tomb, an eye of a statue. I took the brush and I began to clean the statue. More discoveries are afoot as we near Cleopatra's tomb. As recently as 2022, archaeologists were excavating Saqqara, an ancient cemetery south of Cairo. They discovered a huge granite sarcophagus that is believed to be thousands of years old. The coffin belongs to Ta M. Aya. Ta M. Aya was the Ramesses II's chief treasurer. He also held other positions, including royal secretary and chief overseer of cattle. His tomb helped us understand Egyptian rule after the death of King Tut. Ramses II, who succeeded King Tut, is believed to be one of the most important pharaoh that ruled over the affairs of Egypt during the New Kingdom period. During this New Kingdom period, Patam Aya was a key cabinet member. This discovery followed the uncovering of his tomb the previous year. At the time, finding a complete sarcophagus in its original tomb was rare. The menace of grave robbers was the reason for the scarcity of finding a complete sarcophagus. Grave robbers are menaces that haunt archaeologists, who are trying their best to put history back together. They constantly raided the dignitaries' tombs and plundered Ta Am Aya's grave. The casket was found with the lid broken, indicating the possibility of a robbery. Notwithstanding, the sarcophagus makes a very brilliant discovery still. The truth about Cleopatra's life and death has been debated for many years. Her skin color has recently been the subject of conversation among learned minds. Finding her tomb can help lay to rest many of our assumptions. Finding Cleopatra is uncovering the objective facts about history. Hopefully, grave robbers and natural disasters have not eroded the tomb before we get to it. On our way to finding it, however, we made another jaw-dropping discovery that changed what we thought we knew. Discoveries like these are why the search must continue. This new discovery centers around the sun god Ra. There was a time when sun temples were built in reverence to Ra in ancient Egypt. The 5th dynasty, between 2465 BCE to 2323 BCE, usually built these temples close to the pyramids. Sun temples had dedicated staff and agricultural land and received donations on festival days. Six of those sun temples are believed to have been built, while some speculate that the temples were simply renamed over the years rather than being separate, distinct temples. The recent excavation of the Abu Ghurab site in northern Egypt dispels this speculation. In other words, the temple discovered below Nyusera was a separate structure. Nyusera was the sixth king of the fifth dynasty. He reigned from 2400 to 2370 BCE. The temple possesses seals and beer jars that could be traced to the 25th century BC to further lend credence to the fact that the newly discovered temple was older than the temple of Nyusera. The like temple was built from mud bricks. Egypt. The other similar temple that has been discovered honors Uzerkaf, the first king of the 5th dynasty. Following this discovery, we found the Library of Alexandria. The ancient Library of Alexandria is another great treasure of humankind that has been discovered. Unfortunately, the library was burnt in a tragic fire accident. The library is believed to have contained between 400,000 to 700,000 rolls of papyrus on science-related subjects. The fire was nothing short of a travesty. Though the library was initially designed as a mausoleum for Alexander the Great, thankfully, his remains were not buried there. One of the real possibilities was that he was protected by people who still believed in the old religion, the old greco roman pagan religion. Although many people believed that nothing was left of the library, a Polish-Egyptian team discovered what they believed to be the ancient Alexandria Library's original site in 2004. This discovery happened as they excavated parts of the Bruchian region of the Mediterranean city. During the process, they discovered what could be described as lecture halls or auditoria. Unlike the library, however, we have been able to find other structures and items intact. Back in 2001, another team of explorers found the Valley of Golden Mummies. Also known as the Valley of the Golden Mummies, the valley is an ancient home for the dead. 
The Egyptian team at Bahariya Oasis uncovered the mummy festival about 380 kilometers west of the pyramids. If we say that this tunnel is protecting or is holding a stones above something, we cannot say it's a corridor at all. Four tombs containing 105 mummies of high-ranking Roman Egyptians were excavated. Some of the mummies bore religious-related marks, while others had gold marks. Despite being buried there for over 2,000 years, the mummies still look well-kept and were thoroughly preserved. Excavators testify to how well they have stood the test of time. The striking mummies bring to mind an old Hollywood favorite titled The Mummy. Dr. Zahi Hawass believes the discovery of this mummy field would bring Egyptomania to the modern world. In the case of this excavation, scientists gained information about the life and death of Egyptians who lived in Bahariya Oasis during the Greco-Roman era. History shows that the people of this era acquired their wealth by exporting wine to the Nile Valley. If you thought finding a valley full of mummies is where the weird discoveries end, you're in for a shocker. Egypt is a gift that keeps on giving. Archaeologists in Egypt stumbled upon another unique discovery that dates back 2,500 years at an ancient necropolis south of Cairo in 2016. The site was last excavated in 1900, but apparently it still holds some awe-inspiring discoveries in store for us. The archaeologists found a mummy workshop where corpses were embalmed and mummified back in the day. Oh, the stories the walls would tell if only they could speak. The mummification workshop, which belongs to the Persian period of 664 to 404 BC, serves as an embalmer's cassette holding a large pottery vessel collection. The workshop itself is a rectangular structure built from bricks and limestone blocks. Other artifacts found at the site include a trove of pottery, fragments of mummy cups, canopic cylindrical jars, and a gilded silver mask, amongst other things. All of these relics explain the burial practices of ancient Egyptians, especially as they relate to preserving the body for the afterlife. A large shaft lies at the center of the workshop, leading down to a complex of burial chambers with several mummy sarcophagi and wooden coffins that differentiate the social class of the dead interred there. The Egyptians have been brewing beer for millennia now, and nothing proves that more than the discovery of an ancient brewery. However, back in the day, brewing beer was meant for more than personal enjoyment. It also played a major role in how they honored their dead. In the past, before pyramids were built in honor of the pharaohs who had fallen into eternal sleep, Egyptians often used large quantities of beer in performing sacrificial rites during the burial of the kings of Egypt. Due to this high demand for beer, an industrial-scale brewery was constructed as far back as around 3150 BC during the reign of King Narmer. 5,000 years later, the brewery relics were discovered at a funerary site in North Abydos. Abydos held the tomb of kings of Egypt as far back as the pre-dynastic system period. The discolored facility produced about 5,900 gallons of beer at a time. Some drying grains were also found when the site was initially investigated. According to T. Eric Peet, a British archaeologist, the grain was to protect against rot. However, after further exploration at different sites with similar artifacts, it was discovered that the grains were actually for beer making. The site where Pete found the grains was lost until 2018, when magnetic survey technology came into play. Due to its sheer production capacity, the ancient beer facility is like no other. This discovery goes a long way to show how wealthy the rulers of Egypt were. Thousands of pottery and beer jars, amongst others, were found at the site, just as they can be found at any funerary temple. These merchant colonies in distant places along the coast of... One last noteworthy discovery archaeologists have unearthed during their many Egyptian expeditions is a mysterious giant finger discovered in 1988. The particular discovery gives credence to many of the folk tales we may have heard growing up about the existence of giants. This makes us pause to think. Jack and the Beanstalk was not just a silly story made up to entertain children at bedtime. There may be a grain of truth in these stories. This discovery shows a giant human-like finger measuring about 15 inches long. 
skeletons that measure between seven and eight feet in height, which for ancient man would have been rather significant. This is bigger than any human finger you would find today. What makes the discovery even more interesting is that there have been no signs of the remains or even bones that might belong to the finger. Nothing of the sort has been excavated yet in Egypt or even anywhere else in the world. We may have yet to dig deep enough, but that is by the way. Archaeologists are still digging for answers, but who knows if the finger might be that of some ancient gorilla. We should consider that. Perhaps the severed finger of some ancient primate was part of some bizarre past funeral rite. Until we know for sure, we can only guess the answers. In time, archaeologists will piece together enough to give us a solid account of why the finger was there and where it originated. And, if we are lucky, they'll find her tomb and tell all we need to know about Cleopatra's life and death. We must keep exploring the newly uncovered and untouched flooded tunnel until we find answers. Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager. For more entertaining and educative videos like this one, click the video on your screen.